Hello and welcome back once again to the desk. The undefeated have been struck down. The reign of the coachless tyrants has finally been ended. Joining me now, the victorious coach himself, Toxin, head coach of all four TD teams in the tournament. And yes, parade, substitute support for coachless tyranny. Very quickly, the results from the other side of Group A. The Monkeys have officially failed their training. They have been eliminated from Amateur Worlds after going down to Big Duck Entourage in a 22-minute stomp arena. However, they could still force that tiebreaker at the end of the day if they can somehow hand Coachless Tyranny another defeat in this last game, Monkeys' last game of the tournament. Uh, if this does not happen, I believe there will be no tiebreakers because of our rules concerning the head-to-head, -head. so just a battle between TD Juniors and a Big Duck Entourage in the last game of the day for that coveted second seed spot in the semis. Also, another quick note, Goon Squad Gaming Iota in Group B has also been eliminated. Now, to break down that last game that we just witnessed, uh, things started out with a kill for Sailor Uranus down in the bot lane on the Misfortune. Also, Cruertide managed to find a nice outplay in the top lane against Downfall. And it was the side of the TD Juniors that managed to open up a 5-0 lead pretty early on. Uh, things started to go back the other way as Coachless Tyranny found some picks. But the Juniors, of course, managed to pull through in the end. Now, Toxin, you mentioned to me earlier that you thought that Coachless Tyranny was the best team in Group A. How do you feel now that your squad has managed to take them down? Uh, well, so TDR Junior and TD are actually two different orgs. Uh, no, my but mistake. Uh, it does look extremely good for TDR and their chances of making out and going to the next round. Like, this was a huge win for them. Uh, for the side of Coach's Tyranny, like, they are, they're a team that is down to lose games, but they will only lose that one. Like, they're, they're a mm. team where you get them in a, you get them in a best of five. Yeah, they might troll game one, but then the next two, three, four game, uh, game two, three, four. They're going to look dominant, they're going to take over, and they're going to succeed. So, yes, they did lose today. They did lose a game. Uh, but no, really, not really a cause for worry for me on my side. Okay, Toxin, taking it one step at a time. You'll love to see it. Not, not wanting to underestimate your opponents or anything like that. Uh, and, I, and I want to elaborate, or why, why don't we actually give Yes Parade a, a chance to chime in here? How are you feeling, Yes Parade, after your squad has suffered their first loss of the tournament? Uh, I mean, same thing like Toxin, honestly. Uh, you know, with every member on CT, um, they're all strong. Every single one of those players are strong in their own rights. You know, if anyone was to get a lead in the beginning, a lot of the time they can just snowball that lead going further throughout the game. Um, and just kind of take the win. Um, being on the roster for for quite a while before OCT, you know, before Haven, before you know all that, um, they've always tried new things. So you know, like he said, like Toxin was saying, sometimes they'll lose a game, but a lot of the time, that's like the one game they'll let you have. And not to say let you have, uh, you know, talking with the TDR members, Verinda, I talked a lot with her. And I've been like supporting her and her team just in regards to how they've been playing since OCL. Um, and they have dramatically uh, improved since then. And, you know, it was, it was quite surprising to see them actually take a game off of CT. Um, but in regards to that, you know, CT still going to be a strong team. Uh, I don't have any issues with them making it into the first seed and, you know, just going forward from there. Um, TDR, though, definitely going to be on the radar. Um, definitely a strong team and have really adapted and change a lot of this the way that they've played since i've seen them so i uh, you know kudos to those guys yeah absolutely there yes Braden. and i love that you shout out verinda as well um she picked up the wukong in the first game tonight had a fantastic performance and then here again on the vola bear uh you know great uh, skirmishing i found that early advantage great control over the objectives good smites you love to see it some very strong jungle play um, but I want to go back now as we move forward in our review of the second game. The first death for TD Juniors was actually Kruer Tide. He just kind of, well, he just kind of walked into a turret. Uh, and, and he just kind of, well, he died. Um, 
pretty much immediately after that first death, the dominoes, they started to fall a little bit. You know, Sailor Uranus was shut down down there in the bottom lane. The game started to get a little bit dirty. Uh, so, so yes, Parade, like, were you... I mean, I assume you were you were probably already at least a, a little bit uh, nervous uh, after those, you know, five kills going over to TD Juniors in the early game. Were you we're starting to get some hope back, you know, after we we found those kills? I saw in Twitch chat people kind of started popping off a little bit. You know, uh, one one comment that I remember somebody said uh, it looked good until it wasn't for the side of TD Juniors, but you know they managed to pull it out in the end, of course. Uh, so I, I want to hear from you. Like, were you confident? Uh, heading into the mid game that Kosha's tyranny was still going to find a way to turn things around or did you did you see the writing on the wall uh pretty early there How, what was your experience watching this game um watching the game uh, you know like i said i've been on on ct for a while we do a lot of crazy things in the early game and sometimes we do give a lot away um, which didn't really affect me and how i thought on how they're going to perform into the mid to the late game because you know, they like to play it slow. They, they, if they mess up early, hey, we're going to take a step back. We're going to try to make whatever we can out of any issues that pop up. Hey, look, they made a misplay. Let's take advantage of that. And that's kind of like what they did. And that's where, you know, we saw that little bit of a domino effect. And they started kind of taking back that mid game, um, you know, until they fell, you know. But, you know, I, I had a lot of hopes. I was like, oh, wow. Like, they, you know, they took that advantage. Now they're going to go do something with it. They're going to go do what they normally do as CT and try to make something out of out of that yeah absolutely uh, and it, it looks like uh, you know if it wasn't for that dragon stacking coming through for the side of td juniors you know maybe coach's tyranny would have been successful in slowing that game down and eventually finding the outplays but it was not to be um and now i want to i want to go i want to reference my previous desk actually a uh, bickle was really talking a pretty big game might have even cursed him a little bit um, <laughs> he was saying that it was, it was pretty much just a hands diff uh, up and down the rift. So, Toxin, I would like you to comment on that, given the result of the game that we just witnessed. Uh, do you think it was it was the hands that actually were outclassed in the other direction, or did uh, TD Jr. rely on something else to defeat the undefeated? I think in terms of, like, individual player skill, I think that... In the amateur world, CT is probably up and down the lineup the most mechanically skilled team throughout the entire uh, like throughout the lineup. They have strong members in their top lane, with Downfall being arguably the best top laner in all of IBS. They have uh, Chung Young or uh, Ned, otherwise known as Ned, uh, who is one of, if not, I would say he's probably top four. For me in this tournament in the mid lane, I do kind of like some of the TD to uh, mid laners as well as uh, Fishing for Honor when Fishing for Honor is like on the top of his game uh, for the mid lane. And then in terms of bot lane, I think Albedo is like extremely, extremely underrated as a support player. I think she's probably my pick for the best support in the league. And uh, Raining Wolves, solid player. He's played in gold in the top lane so he knows his lane around the rift so yeah i think individual player skill they are definitely on top but i do think that tdr did get the better of them and was able to take them down through their teamwork and through their ability to just like get people onto the uh get people onto the rift the one thing to know about uh group a is at least from knowing as the td like coach for all three of the teams is that we've been trying to scrim throughout the entirety of the week. And none of the teams in Group A scrim. The only ones that scrim are TDR Jr. Unless there's like a specific CT doesn't want to uh, scrim us. That would be the only thing, uh, mm. asterisks there could be. But I think that it's mainly just Group A doesn't really scrim. TDR scrims a lot. And their teamwork was able to come together in this victory. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was pretty easy to see for all of us. But I am now just getting word, guys. It looks like our teams are just about ready to get into that champion select phase for our third game of the night. So once again, Toxin, head coach for TD, and Yes Parade substitute support for Coachless Tyranny. Thank you both very, very much for joining me here on the analyst desk. We are getting ready for our third and final game of the night, Big Duck Entourage against TD Juniors for that second place spot in the semifinals. 
Take it away, casters. Hey, hey. <clears throat> we are back, guys. Game three is about to be on this way after picking bands. BDE on blue side. TDR on a two win streak on red side here. So I want to see how much this is going to affect their early game picks. As you saw the last two games, they've pecked and found the MF and the Leona um, round two, uh, round one and two respectively. So I wonder and see if they're going to be able to secure that yet again. Because Big Tuck Entourage is probably going to be picking up on Hay TDR. They've been kind of just going for this MF Leona bot lane. We should probably take out one or maybe both of those picks. Uh, I know there was a lot of talk in chat about TDR's MF being kind of unbeatable. So far unbeatable today, Huey. So yeah. oh, there's the ban. There's the ban. Yeah, no, I mean it you be it'd be weird unless you had a uh solid answer to it. Um but for the most part, yeah, I don't think that's really the the right call or answer to it. Uh so I think the ban the ban there is the right call. So we ain't gonna be locked in there. Um, for the Ducks, Graves going to be taken up again. Is that going to be the Graves mid? I think so, as we see the round two Diana being picked. So I like how they have a fallback plan. Uh, if their first round pick doesn't get or gets taken away and banned away, as we see as Leona is going to be getting taken away uh, from TDR. Yep, that Diana has been banned away from TDR all night long, so they are going to be snatching that one on up here. But the Leona locked in. Rek'Sai being hovered, most likely going to be locked in here. Not something we're too used to seeing on the Rift, mm -mm. but most likely a counter pick here for the Big Duck Entourage. And we'll give you some nice extra pop and sizzle for these team fights to finish off some low health enemies. It gives you some very insane ganking paths, and you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Diana fairly well, just due to the fact that you pop up the Diana and you just kind of wail away at the Diana shield be damned. But there's the Nautilus here for TDR, so they got, some is. they got some beef. That's the scary man, and I've been waiting for him. <clears throat> He's finally found his way through. And I mean, honestly, Nautilus can do the same job as Leona. I think, um, I think Leona is the better one of the two but obviously both are great tank engage supports um finding their way through into the back line and locking down the carry so it's really gonna i feel like it's gonna become more of a player um difference than per se champion difference yeah let's see because right now it looks like big duck entourage just taking my more comfort picks from the bot lane in tdr Going to pinch away at this top lane here. PTR leveraging a lot of their bands towards the solo sides here on the Big Duck Entourage, but that Swain locked in. We probably already have one of the solo laners locked in. Um, Swain Leona, not something we typically see in the bot lane. Horn locked in though, so. Uh oh. The Orn Horn <laughs> is locked. Goes back to the 100% uh, pick ban. Yeah, just about, man. And honestly, you can't even blame anybody. Orn is a great pick there. Able to upgrade the items late game. The Orn Horn breaking the game if played if played properly. Really can set the pace um in a late game a team fight. So honestly, it's just it's a crazy pick. It's a very strong pick. I like to see it. Tristana being picked here as well. And I like this. The Leona Tristana is kind of like the MF Leo. It has the same effect, um, just not as much group kill potential from the Make It Rain Solar Flare, but still has a lot the single single solidarity lockdown plus the high damage burst coming from your ADC. Silas looking to fill out the gap there, and BDE coming out of this draft pick pretty solid. Yep, they got. Quite a bit of damage on their side. Their most lackluster part will be their somewhat middling siege here for the most part. Um, but they do have the damage. They do have the tankiness. Things being hovered. Bit of a throwback here. After all, they're 
nerfs where I kind of had a leverage at this champion. Kind of flew off the radar, but being picked up here by TDR once again. Gonna have their work cut out for them, though. Given the fact that there's gonna be a Swain, Rek'Sai, Leona, Tristana, and Silas all kind of gunning for you here. Yeah, it's really gonna land over onto Nautilus and Orn to make sure that she is well and protected. Um, because they have a lot of answers to get to that back line uh, between Rek'Sai, Tristana, and Silas. Not necessarily for BDE side the most tanky team, but a lot of innate sustain and healing. And I think we're starting to notice a trend here. It's either super bulky, big health bar, or we extend a fight through our healing and damages, uh, so on and so forth like that. Yep, and uh, there's definitely going to be some long fights this game here. We saw what happened last oh, yeah. time around with the Swain and the Unstoppable Suck. That was quite the tale. But once again, like you said, we are seeing a lot of beef here on the Rift. And we're going to see some pretty, pretty damn well extended fights here. Question yeah. Because I'm looking at BD... Big Duck Entourage's comp here. You have the Tristana and Rek'Sai, two champions that really want to just kind of burst one at the start of the fight, more so Rek'Sai. Will it be able to get that pop and force the five versus four? Because it is going to be a little bit tricky. It is. You have the Nautilus to deal with. You have the Orn to deal with. You have the Diana to deal with. Also, while trying to get over them, they can also just kill you. Mm -hmm. You know, like if that CC lands, you're stuck. <laughs> like <laughs> you're not moving. You are really not moving. Um, so it really doesn't matter how much damage you have or how much healing that you can do if you're just CC'd Wombo Combo for the rest of um for the rest of the game. So really necessarily it's gonna be a toss-up. It's really gonna come down to the players. I honestly feel both teams did fantastic through draft pick. Um, they both have set of objectives and an idea of which way to go. Now they just have to pilot it correctly for it to work. Mm -hmm. Going to come down to execution here for both these sides. As mentioned, uh, Big Duck Entourage, they do really want to get the burst here, especially under this jinx but on the side of tdr as well they really do not have the burst to get through some of these enemy team members and they are very heavily reliant on softening up the back line so to speak and front line here with this diana graves and hoping that the jinx can go to town here because i feel like if tdr loses their jinx early in a fight then things might just go to the gutter a little bit but if you Remember from the past two games, if like this Graves, for example, gets ahead, gets that early eclipse, there's not really anyone that can match him solo. You're going to have to send out two to handle that split push. And if it gets to that case, it may be over before it even begins. That's if we see a triple kill early on for Graves again. Um, ah, 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 true, true. Not something you see every game. No, I would agree with that. It will be Silas top, actually, um, which I thought would be more for the mid lane. Um, into Orn, I like it, but then I don't like it. I like it um, because Silas should be able to break through the Orn, but I don't know if he has enough to necessarily continuously break through the Orn, um, transitioning from early to uh, the mid game. Hmm. So for sharing this top lane, it is going to be about that mid to late game here, because early game, you do have to worry about the Orn damage. But with your Kingslayer heal, you will be able to take it to the Orn quite a bit here for those shorter trades. And assuming, oh Lord, assuming we see the Conqueror here, um, you will be able to at least get some extra gas in the tank here for those longer trades, Huey. Mm -hmm. but like you said, it is going to be very scuffed and very rough early game here for cheering that top lane. Yeah. Um. So where do you think we are going? Last last game, I think we did pretty good on predictions, except for last game. 
Beautiful work, by the way. Um, so where are we going? Where are we going? Um, bot lane is definitely going to be very huge here. When you have a Tristana Leona lane, they want to hit level 2 here ASAP for Big Duck Entourage. So expect Ravon and Swag Money to try, try and just push for a level 2 very fast, Huey, and then look to all in. Because Sailor Uranus will not be able to take the double champions jumping onto them combo. Yeah, no, they cannot handle it. And if it's found, that's super scary. If they can set the pace there in the bot lane, they can really handle the Jinx, handle the Nautilus, and kind of extend that lead and influence the rest of the map and really start to bring the house down. Mm -hmm. But I think, hmm? uh, and I think with that, <clears throat> we will start loading uh, into the Rift. Game three for Group A is on the way. Who's going to take it home? We don't know. Predictions should be up in chat. Be sure to lock in and see if your predictions match with the uh, commentator table. And we will be right back for Game 3. Do not go anywhere. Keep it locked, guys. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen. We are back. Game three is on the way. BDE on the blue side, TDR on the red side, and um, go, uh, go. Where do you think we're going, man? TDR win again, three zero. Can yeah, they do it? And, uh, on quite the roll tonight here, but they are having to play on a different side and with a different comp for the first time tonight. They don't have that same one with combo. And you really say that though? I mean, I I do I I see the death ball still. Like there definitely is a death ball. It's just not a one book combo death ball. True, but I mean, I feel it could kind of still still the same. The the moonfall moonfall landing uh knock up uh, from Death Charge plus the Orn Horn that should be just about a wrap in any team fight there. Yeah, yeah, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I don't. I just don't think it's as, excuse me, as profound as it was for the last two games. Huh. Makes sense. Um, looking over at um, runes and masteries, nothing too much out of the ordinary. Um, I do like the cleanse here on Sailor. I think it's like kind of needed with all the stuff going on here. Which is kind of weird because usually it's the Tristana who has to take cleanse because um, typically if you're an AD carry facing a Tristana, you'll take the exhaust because as soon as Tristana uses the rocket jump on top of you, you exhaust the Tristana, ruins their combo, they're slowed, they can't do damage to you. And you're just kind of way on the way on them. That's also why you see cleanse a lot in Tristana's. But yeah. when you're against the Leona, I mean, the cleanse does make sense. I'm not going to yeah, lie. Got, and then don't forget, you got the Leona, you have the Swain E, and you have the Silas um, Kingslayer. Or excuse me, uh, Abscon. Sound a dot. Abscon a dot. I like how <laughs> it's no two more different chains. ones. It's still the same. I mean, it, it still hurts. So the cleanse yeah. is going to be really beneficial. Um, but I do yeah, agree. I like the bot lane. We'll be uh -oh. spotted out. We'll have Rocket to hop out of here. Used. Hulk. Onto Leona. Ooh, the flash is going to be popped there. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, we take those. Um, five minutes flash there. So till eight minutes, Leona has time. Or excuse me, Diana has time to come back and re-gank the lane for the bot lane. And a little bit of a slower pace for this third game. Really mm -hmm. not explosive out of the gates how the other games have been. And honestly, I'm not... Okay. I'm not... Ooh. Flash, flash up pop there up. is going to end. Double flash is going to add up to the first one. A lot of damage is there. The Cypher in the lead in the top lane. And uh, the nice gank coming in from Tafiki is just going to kind of reset the lane there for him. Yeah. And that's a pretty big deal too, because mm -hmm. uh Rek'Sai does want to snowball. You don't you kinda fall off as the game goes on. That's a good Zenith blade into the insta cleanse. Oh man, check it onto the bot side there. That was 
pretty scary there. Still alive though. Cleanse and Flash had to be used there. But trade the Flash Ignite. Mm hmm. But a Flashless Jinx is a very easy to gank Jinx. Flash Because next time that Zenith Jinx. Blade lands, there happens to be a Tafiki here <sighs> in the area, you know, like that. That would have been a little bit too far, though. Not going to lie. Yeah. But, uh,. You got Tafiki in the area here, Huey, and you land one of those Zenith plays. This That's should be very dead sailor here. That's a hundred percent a wrap there. Uh looking over onto the CS here. Uh it's going to fall just about more towards BDE side, but nothing to really say is circumventing or really overlapping anybody. Uh, in terms of farm here um, as first Drake will be spawning momentarily and we will have infernal Drake coming up so no infernal soul yeah we get a decent trade top lane here not much can be found chamber is gonna land maybe a knockout but yeah I think that's about it I like the control here coming from the cypher to kind of push the wave back in force him under the tower it's a little unfortunate Orn's not more of a own per se character, but I do like that he's really starting to set the in terms of CS here, uh, nearly doubling even after um, the lost gank topside. That's just from the fact that Cypher has that stronger trading power early on. Just with how stupid Orn base damages are, and then you're already kind of decently tanky to the fact that you are a tank. Cherry really needs some scaling in the pocket here. Yep, starting to duck though. Gonna eat He's the full not combo. Six yet. Gonna get knocked up, up against the kill. wall. The call god is going to land there as well. Mm. Yeah, that was pretty easy. I see where Cherry was coming from um, with the trade, but I just don't think they respected the, the power of Orn there. Uh, without their six there to at least you could at least trade it there and then kind of did draw horn there Ooh, hoax land land on Tristana. Ch the chains are gonna cc land there um diana is coming back around from gang they should be able to pick up like diana but unfortunately they don't grab anything they're gonna force the retreat back and i think there's gonna be to rotate the first dragon uh-oh there we might be a steal TK. here. They do. The, the terms are the, the the steal is definitely possible. No vision because of the control ward. 700 right now. They kind of have out the guess. Yeah. Almost getting it too. Um, Not bad though. Not a bad play there. Didn't get a lot. Um, But was able to get first strike and get priority. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the fight oh. is starting to get on there. CC is going to land. The demonic is coming. Though. Demon Flare is there, but the ignite really, um, really giving that uh edge over to Cortitide there. And uh oh, are we starting to see um that graves get big again? Maybe, maybe. I mean. There's no triple kill quite yet, but the fact that you're leading in CS, your team's already leading, and now you have that 1-0 solo kill here. Um, going to be pretty hard to deal with. There is the Serrated Dirk and Vamp Scepter, so nice. no Umbral Glaive rush here once again. Guessing um, it's more of a Graves Jungle sort of thing. Don't know, eh? I mean, it's okay. I like it, though. The Serenity Dirk plus the, um, the Vampiric Scepter should definitely keep uh, Cortotide in terms of being able to keep up with the sustain. Not as much, but it should definitely help a bit more. Checking over onto this top side here. Um, the double horn here, that's great. He's still going to be able to find the timing there. Knockback plus the Brittle. Pr and I have to Flash away. Oh, but he catches him in the corner there. But he's still okay with the dash. That was a really good exchange uh, for the Cypher. He's going to be able to rotate, help out their jungler um, for the first Herald. And where do you think if it's secured, which I don't think there really is any anyone to respond this 
to respond to this herald where do you think they should put it uh -oh. okay I was in the middle of sipping a little bit of oj there but there you go it really just depends like because what you typically do is you make a play make a gank and then you drop it there mm -hmm. um question is where can you make a successful gank mid lane you're already winning in cs there's a solo kill so you can make it happen there top lane also doable also doable Ooh. you gotta lead there Good nice place. loot did they they did get that Nice mm -hmm. little invade there. Crescent Strike is going to catch the nice blue. But there goes the Moonfall. Nice damage is there with the Moonfall plus the collateral damage. But the sustain there from Swain is going to keep him alive. And it's going to bring back the buff. Buff transfer complete, as they say. Buff transfer complete. But... <laughs> If you are CT, you still got on chat and say, but you didn't get it originally. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, yeah, yeah. But, so I mean, technically, yeah, they technically. still won. They still won, though. <laughs> 140 all here. about the mental game, baby. 100%. Sometimes you got to send out a message. That's all. 140 here for second dragon here. It will be Ocean Drake. So Infernal and Ocean Soul off the board leaving us earth dragon and cloud drake um i would prefer the earth drake over the cloud i think honestly for both sides let's see we, we will... shall see what we get right, here while out right now we just have to watch as cherry taking even more of being in his top side they really really need to get some items under their belt here good little yoinky spoinky in the mid lane you have to peek you in the side wings here, so if you got uh Loratide low enough here, it might just be a prey seeker into that Queen's Wrath here from Tafiki to finish off a kill. Yeah, that would be really, really cool play there. Um, but I think I it's like he wasn't on a ward, but his spidey sense was tingling there. He a hundred percent knew that something was going on. Oh, but Verinda does not have that ability. Flash is going to get them. So that horn horn to the moonfall. Looking good. The rocket. Okay. Wow, what a flip. Good stuff there. Going to continue on to the fight. Orn sustaining, but not going to be able to uh, do much more than just take up the damages. The Queens or the Void Rush is going to find the mark there as well. The fight is going to continue on through. Tristana trying to find the damages onto Nautilus, but he lives with 10%. The Void Seeker there almost taking him out, and they're um, going to have to retreat back from this Ocean Drake here. Graves in the curtains right now. Curtitide looking good. Yeah. Ooh. They gotta have to be careful here, man. They are very low. They're gonna have to re back. They have a slight wave over to the uh, mid tower here, but they're not gonna be able to get too too much. Oh, scratch that. The Rift Herald just being spawned. They may be able to get first tower and the second Drake under their pocket. Oh, it's gotta be, be careful here. Curdle time. Oh, the flash out of the out of the Swain W is gonna get himself out of trouble. 2.8 is left onto the dragon. Vision is there from the dust. They only gonna have a certain amount of time as they go for the guess here. Oh, they try they to go for the steal. steal. It. This so is a bloodbath. So far, the bloodbath is gonna start. Demonic Ascension is there, but he gets caught onto the chompers, so he cannot continue moving forward in. Finally, find his way on the range, but he cannot get onto the back row here. Blue side, they are gonna find like find a, a a lead advantage. Um, that's gonna be to their side, but Dragon will be picked up over for TDR. That was actually insane. Really, really back and forth, but TDR do still maintain a healthy gold lead in this game. Um, for the time at least and they do have the double dragons early once again it is going to be cloud soul so they can look to get that pretty quickly here about nine minutes from now so we're talking about mid 22 you know 22 and a halfers in this game they got some strong contenders here 
the very least, even though you did give up several kills there, the fact that you have this 201 Jinx, you have those graves with that kill and some farm under their belt, you're at least feeling good. But it's more shaky ground than you've been on in previous games. Yeah, it's close. There's no okay. set pace just yet. Okay. Right, like a little that. exchange there. It was a little scary there, but uh, it just wasn't worth it. On I do like the retreat option there. Um, instead of going for the, instead of trying to force the dive there, because that could have just ended sloppy there. Two level advantage there on quarter tide on the bot lane. I just don't think that would have been it. It would have not been it. But uh. I think the vision coming over from the side of, <clears throat> excuse me, from TDR, um, really covering their top uh, side and over the river as well. Really good work. Really, I, really nice coverage, yeah. Second Rift Herald <laughs> but, is spawning. We may get a fight here for this one. It is interesting because it is second Herald. There's Orn the horn train. He's gonna go from actually scratch that. That was uh Cherry's Orn there. Just trying to relieve some pressure there uh to try to get the cipher away from their tower. As we do see the group up here in mid. No commit just yet from either side. So we just got a little skirmish there, a little dance, but no commit, no calls there. And I want you to check out bot lane. There's Korotide yet again. And and this is kind of what we were touching about in the draft pick here. Um, You got it and check it out. They're taking two down to kind of... Calvary, though. Mm -hmm. You got to take the two there to handle the split. Checking onto the top side, though. Decipher does get the tower there. Oh. Revan... Yeah, the three Get man. Down, Mr. President. Yeah, the three man jump there is gonna take the lunch money that he just got uh, for the tower. But I mean, I think it's a pretty decent fair trade. One for tower, not that much there. Um, it is gonna be some more money in Revan's pocket, but I don't think it's the end of the world. Definitely isn't. Um, because the biggest thing for TDR is the fact that you get the double objective off of that. You get a turret. And you get second herald. Yes, it is second herald. There are no first turrets still available. There's no plates available. That's why it's considered less valuable. But the fact you're going to have this rift herald in your pocket, that free split push tool for the next dragon in about a minute, or the next time you have a successful gank, is still always a very handy ace to have up your sleeve. Ernest is, of course, on TDR as to how they use it and how effectively they use it. Yeah, that is definitely one thing to another. It is an honestly a good call here. 40 seconds left for the drag. I want to know what the play is. You have the Herald. Probably send it down mid. That T2 is looking weak sauce right now. Uh, TP is going to come in for the Cypher there for the mid. Um, the Herald is going to be spawned back. Maybe that was a miss button. Or it might be the force to the bot lane. Either way, we're gonna about to see how things are going to unfold here. Uh oh, uh oh, they're gonna have to be careful here. The five men in river right now, be terrible position right now. Actually, instead of forcing them into the river, they're gonna just split it down and force BDE to them. Huh? Yeah, cause dragons up. The Herald, able to get two charges. That's a big pop. Nice charge there. Demonic ascension is not. And blue side and BDE is just falling apart right now. The damages was way too real there. Nice knock up there. The wombo combo was definitely still there. It wasn't, like I said, as pronounced, but the death ball is still 100% there. Yeah. It's in your favor, but the biggest thing is the fact that you're able to get a turret and a half on this bot side, maybe even two turrets, and you will secure this dragon. You will secure this dragon. Come on. That's lead, baby. 
Okay, there we go. There we go. That's lead, man. I, you, I gotta say, TDR with these dragon controls are amazing here. It's just setting the entire rest of the game for them. They have they have exits. They have outs. Uh oh. Ooh, that was very close. Nevermore oh, is going to go. Seed is going to pop. Tafiki doesn't have flash, but he has the tunnel to get himself back out. Um, and yeah, that can be a 24 minute soul. Granted, it's not the strongest of souls, but that is definitely going to help in the next uh skirmishes that are going to come in the in the late game. Whew. Now let's because this is once again a dominating lead coming out here for TDR Huey. Ah, oh, man. 5K they have the early Sulcon. They have the gold lead. They have the objective lead. And uh, the Ducks, they got to they gotta make something happen here. Yeah. They definitely have to make something happen here. Um, They got to try and find a pick. Um, Try to get that Bushwhack. Try to get that Jinx down. Maybe try to get Koro tied down. Um, they had a really nice three-man rotation on the Cypher. Um, they need to find something like that again, but get it on one of these carries. And before uh, Verinda can get that uh, Moonfall <clears throat> wind up there, or before Orn finds the knockup um, for the team. That knockup would be pretty damn huge here. Mm-hmm. But you really could check the scoreboard, and really the the carries are set, the the set the pace is set, the carries are set two one four three one two uh for Coro Tide and Sailor. You you can't ask for much more except for the the one drop death there. It would have been a little better for Diana to get a little more ahead, but yeah. I mean they're doing they're doing their job as best as they can to this team comp they're finding the knockup and they're finding the multiple knockup that's like the three four five man knockup and the team is just following up just you know that sometimes they just got to take the sacrifice to the kda for the win yeah that's kind of the name of the game here um if you are the uh, duck entourage because you want to make some shmoney happen. You do have mm -hmm. this 201 Dristana with two items here for this next fight. So that's definitely something you can rally around. If you can maybe get something to happen, maybe get a pick, maybe just force something at a very opportunistic time, then you can look to make something happen from there. And yeah. it starts with those knockups, like you said. Yeah, I mean, they're not out of the full ballpark yet. Topside really took a beating um, in terms of CS, but Tristana is still 2-0. She gets another 1-2 shutdown. That brings up the potential for this turnaround that much more in terms of split pushing and in terms of team fight damage uh, output potential. Yeah. Something we're just going to have to see once the team fights do start. Seen a few of them at least, but. Have we gone in favor? They have been going in favor of TDR here. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. I do like the collector pickup here um, from Corda uh, Tide. Just to make sure the deal is sealed uh, with the passive uh, death and taxes. So, um, so no late game uh, heal burst from the Kingslayer or coming from Tafiki's Rage Bar or from Fishing for Honor or from Fishing for Honor Swain there. So I really like that pickup. Yeah. Um, that and also lets you pivot into more recruit build here if you want to just complement with more DPS on your side. You can... Ooh. I'm kind of leaning the towards cipher. the more just burst here. Oh, your they're pinched. Build. They're pinched. I don't know if they know that Orn's here. They have to have seen him there. They got to get out of this. This is a really bad spot. Oh, man. You guys don't want to be fun. here. This is a bad pitch, There's dude. Prima positioning, though, for TDR. Ornhorn is coming down. Knock up over onto the plane. Here comes the... 
There goes the knockup as well. To just not being. The rest of the team lockdown coming down onto the Leona, and that's gonna be. Oh, uh, real quick. Wombo combo is still definitely found there. Two seconds left for the soul. And I think it's going to be the four man for the Baron and the one man for the soul. Uh, and I like this call. So they might be able to pick up Cartite here since they're sending two, three people actually to contest this dragon. So big deck entourage, they at least stop the soul. Yeah. But at what cost? Yeah, unfortunately. And the thing is, it's not even a big soul, honestly. Uh-oh. Looking for the catch up okay, there. CC is to going to hit. land. He's trying to get out of it. Looking for the dash. Wow. Oh, cannot escape the wreck side void rush. Once you are marked, they are coming at you like a land hey, shark. Okay, okay. So you are able to get Dragon, you're also able to get a pick on one of the primary split pushes on the enemy team. Yes, you do give up this turret, but it is just a singular turret. And it's not the biggest loss in the world when you're this far behind. The biggest deal is you're not going to have to deal with Soul for another few more minutes. You're not going to have to be dealing with the Baron buff split pushing graves. So it's that like, is it's true. a small victory. It's a small victory. You didn't it's have to take a nothing. very heavy L to get it, though, so... Listen, it could have been worse. They could have Soul and Baron and a split pushing grapes. You try to take out and circumvent as much as you can do, and when you're on the back foot, you can do. You only can do as much as you can, you know? So, I mean, I think that's a win, honestly, um, for Ducks. Thing is, they they're just... going to need, like, some actual big... Mm -hmm. though, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they can't. Yeah, they're not going to live off these small trades. They got to find a way to get onto this Jinx. 4, 1, and 3 right now. They need to find a way onto her and wipe her out before it could get serious. Swain kind of needs to find his way into the team fights a little better. Phase Rush, Ghost, and Flash, and still having issues or having difficulty of... um of being able just to be the drain bird that we've seen in previous games. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And for those wondering, um, CT did win. The oh, hold that thought. Oh, knocked down there. Oh, that's a nice catch there. Revan's on a killing spree there. Ornhorn was You're going to land. Base, oh, we lost the tackle there. But yeah, check down bot side. And now the minion stopping the recall. Nice save there from the bit uh from the minion uh getting paid the big bucks there. So again you find Coro Tide, again you shut him down, but you lose an objective yet again, and I don't know. Revan, that's Revan's killing spree. I think that can be really big. It can be. The issue is you're still bleeding all over the rift right now the gold lead has actually grown a little bit here thanks to that baron it hasn't been the worst baron buff to deal with and big duck entourage have been putting their best hat in the ring here to try and stifle it off to mixed results to mixed results they just need to start finding some dubs like we said been able to pick up some objective bounties with that last dragon with this turret so it's gonna soften. It's gonna give you a little bit more cushion. It's still a six thousand gap yeah. though. So I mean the thing is they're still in this. It does not feel far away, honestly. It may look on paper really bad uh for for the big ducks, but honestly, I don't think they're that far away. One team fight can really set the pace and really just completely turned his game on its head 3-0 oh, and 2 tristana she can just kind of soak up that bot lane super minions continue expanding that lead there 242 cs already and look at the items there i.e lord dominix you're ripping through this orn and nautilus if given the chance and tristana is not the easiest of characters to keep to that's if you do get the chance because you are facing the ornaments starting to come on in. That's a lot of just extra resistance. Oh, okay. Okay, Decipher's Ooh. fine. 
back to Cypher's uh -huh. going on the aggro here. S Solar Flare was gonna stop the 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 call there. Gonna mix it back on with their own. But Pink Ducks are getting decimated. It was looking fantastic for them, but they can't find their way. Monica Ascension is not going. Uh, she the Monica Flare is going to pop, but it's just not there. Oh man. They were such a slow pace between the um the matches and the skirmishes. It looked a lot closer, but that team fight right there just set the pace there and closed it out. T D R or yeah, T D R is you know today. Oh the extra padding into uh, the is finds the shutdown at the end. Couldn't even let Revan stay unkillable that game. Or deathless, deathless. Wow. Yeah, definitely killable, definitely killable wow. as we saw there. But that means it's a 3 0 end of the day here. Beautiful work there. And you can't be arguing. They got to be going on. You cannot ask for much more if you're on the side of TDR. Beautiful work there. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. That was, that was crazy. Mm hmm. I can't believe it, honestly, man. Um, total, total early game advantage and domination to kind of close these out, these pre 30s. And you kind of see a difference between day one and day two, where day one, these games were a lot, lot longer. Almost, they were past the 30 minute mark. We're getting over, um, to uh, pass Soul Dragon, so on and so forth, to now these games getting closed out pre-30. Uh-huh, yeah. And, um... Hey. Your TDR, you're probably feeling pretty good about today. Pat yourself on the back, man. GG's over there, man. Seriously, seriously, seriously work. Um, and yeah. Mm-hmm. But... We are going to be bringing Newman back here on the desk for our wind down of the day. So just give it a quick little second. We, we got to swap a scene or something here. Be hearing Newman in just a second. Hello? Hello. I back. There you are. I am back. What's up, guys? Hey, hey Good buddy. Cast today. Uh, and yeah, that was uh, TDR Jr. securing their spot in the semifinals. They're going to be facing down at Coachless Tyranny, I believe, in that uh, Group A semi. And uh, Coachless Tyranny, on the other hand, guys, they did manage to defeat the Monkeys once again in fairly convincing fashion. So those will be our semifinalists. No tiebreakers required. And uh, yeah, I, I just want to get your uh, your favorite moments from the cast today from from each of you. Huey, maybe you first. Anything stand out to you? Any any really exciting moments that uh, that you enjoyed? I got to say the TDR bot lane. Super amazing yeah, work, man. Sure. <clears throat> the Leo MF. I, it's just like it's just a tale as old as time. Mm -hmm. Like, how long has that combo worked? Honest, like, let's be real. Like, how long has this combo been in the game? It just works. I love it. It's just like if it if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it really just set the pace and just kind of rolled their way through there. Really beautiful work onto them. Um, also, uh, for Graves as well. Like, what? I don't know. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the mid graves. Mid graves last season was a oh, very big a thing. thing. That was yeah. a very big thing. That's why he got his victorious skin. So to bring it back onto this new patch with the more durability, love to see it, man. Really good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. A sailor Uranus and Caesar tearing it up down there in the bottom lane. Like you said, Huey, the misfortune Leona combo. It's a tale as old as League of Legends itself. Love to see that busted out once in a while on this. This age of new broken overtuned champions, you know, it's nice to see that the the classics, the tried and true, can still get it done. Uh, Go for Reno, over to you now. Favorite moment from your from your games today? What stood out to you? As the Sway Mordekaiser one v one in top lane, <laughs> I believe that was game two. <laughs> the big suck. Or as the Death Roman, yeah, it was just the suck zone. Mm. 
the <laughs> infamous stuck like four times in a row on cast is always a blast that and also it's just kind of funny watching because mordecai's just like ha you're in here but the swain's like you're trapped in here with me <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely fun stuff um so i want to i want to also because we i didn't really get uh, a chance to talk to you guys very much today I, I mean hopefully you enjoyed your little breaks off air there but uh what were your predictions like for for our games today and and how did the actual results stack up against that how did you guys do i go check back i think i did a pretty bad so my standings <laughs> guess uh first was going to be ct Ducks okay. were going to be second, and my ah. E in third, and TDR in fourth. Ooh, underestimating yeah. the yeah. juniors there was Huey. I, I hundred percent did. I, 100% did. <laughs> um, I was re- like, so okay, so I didn't really see TDR last week. Yeah. Um, I was really enjoying what MIT was going for, and I really liked the unity coming from them. Um, CT was just a very serious, serious threat. And the Ducks were doing great, even with a sub. So I really thought that that's how it was going to go. But yeah, no, TDR really came through, stepped up, struck their stuff, and just set the pace for day two. Stream buff activated, maybe? Maybe. Who knows? Definitely maybe. <laughs> go for Eno. How about you? How'd you do today? Uh, in terms of matches, I was 0-2 for the first two, and then I kind of didn't predict a winner for the third one. No, no prediction. I'm 0 2 on ah. match today. Sorry, what was that? Oh, I'm 0 and 2 on matches today. So okay, all right. You win some, you lose some. Unless you're me, <laughs> and you do neither. Well played, well played there, Gopher. Um, but taking a look now at Group B, guys, there actually is still some action over there at Twitch.tv/slash Agus Esports GG. Um, they are going to have a tiebreaker, I believe. The TD Army. Is is completely deadlocked at three and two right now, guys. Wow. Uh, GSGI, of course, was eliminated by the TD Army, but currently, right now, uh, it is Supernova versus Syndicate over there on that other stream. They're about twenty minutes in, and it's an incredibly close game. So, guys, if you don't have that tab open already, you're gonna want to pull that up right now. Pull it up. Um, but do do you guys have any predictions on which? TD teams are going to make the cut and make it through to the semis over there on the other side of the bracket. Oh, Group B, man. Group B is explosive, explosive. It's can, crazy over there. Can TD do it again? I don't know. I don't know. I think so, though. I think so. I think well, we clearly, may have two TDs. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> two, two of them can do it, yes. Two uh, of them question, can do the it. The question is which two? Oh, that's a good one, man. Yeah, Shadow, know. Syndicate, and Supernova. All at so, three and two. Shadow... Shadow and Syndicate. I don't know. Ah. Remember, remember, guys. Shadow was three and zero at the start of today, and they the dropped reset. their two games today. Yep. And Syndicate and Supernova are both two and zero, and they're facing each other in the third game today. Uh, Explosive. I don't think we're gonna have an answer until those are really finished out, man. Because you really can't. I'm gonna, I can't. I'm I can't. Hold your feet to the fire, Huey. But I'm. I'll let Gopher go first. Which Which TD team isn't making the cut, Gopher? I, I'm gonna. Especially since you didn't have a prediction for our third game here in Group A, I'm gonna force you make make the call. Who Who's gonna be? Uh, let's say Syndicate. I don't really know enough about Group B, so I'm just kind of winking it. That's okay. That's all we need. Uh, Huey. You gonna I mean, you gonna join with your co-caster I'm there? You join the with the co-caster. Gonna, gonna if go down. The, yeah, if the syndicate isn't okay. up yet, it's probably down, man. All right. Well, they're up two kills and one dragon right now. Twenty-one and a half minutes. Uh, we're just gonna, I think, go ahead and raid those guys. But do you guys have any final thoughts before we close out the day over here in Group A? Not much, man. Big GG to everyone tuned in and keeping it locked. Uh, everyone who participated as well. Um, I cannot wait to see what semifinals bring, and I really cannot wait in grand finals brings. Yeah, absolutely. Gopher? Uh, shout out to my dog. She's sleeping very peacefully. Oh, yeah. We out love out the dog community. shout outs. Good stuff. Again, good work on the cast tonight, guys. Thank you to all of our viewers very much for watching. We appreciate you guys very much. 
We're going to now send it on over to Group B so you can catch the rest of that action, see who's going to be going up in the semifinals on the other side of the bracket. Uh, but again, thank you very much. Have a great night.